let me tell you guys about the plant that I don't like. The one that's holding me up, it's holding me back, and I can't move forward until this. Hey you guys, welcome back to another one. This is your boy Ben from Spittin' Tracks Pheasantry. I'm glad you guys joined me on this one. On this one guys, we're gonna uh, talk about plants. Now, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you'll know that I like planting plants around here. Kinda make the place look good and a lot of times I fail. A lot of stuff that I plant dies off and then I try with something else. You know, I have no green thumb. I just uh, pretty much just do what works for me as far as planting the trees and all that stuff. But there's one particular plant, and it's a big one, that is giving me a lot of trouble trouble excuse me it is holding me back it is um, setting me back to where i can't do a project and i'm going to share that with you guys but before i get into that bad news i'm going to update you guys on the plants that i have going on around here and the ones i've done videos about all right guys so let's just take a little stroll now if you guys know me by now or been watching me you know i'm a fan of the flowering plum tree this is a very very hardy plant it grows really well in our soil here and I can't kill it and that's good because if I can it will die easy <laughs> but yeah the flower and plum tree and also guys look it is springtime see those blooms that lets you know spring is here all right so let's move along to some other ones now this plant right here I got from my mother-in-law I have no idea what it is but um, once it thrives and it bushes out, I guess I'll find out, you know. I got it like it is. You guys remember the privet plants? Well, check it out. This one didn't make it. This one didn't make it. I was really hoping for the privet. People have told me it's pretty hardy. But look at this one. This is one of my privet trees. Now, mind you, these were all pulled up and i just stuck them into this good soil here in these pots and kind of watered them every now and then didn't pay too much attention to them but uh yeah check it out we got a little growth there nothing here that one's dead i think it's dead you know i'll leave it alone for a while and also you guys know about my english ivy yeah i have a few pots here still or a couple yeah i like to have those around the pens let them grow around the pens for some like privacy make the birds feel good you know and those are still small so it's gonna be a while before i find out where i where those need to go or what i'm gonna do with them but they're gonna go somewhere yeah oh yeah here's some uh some bulbs i planted a couple years ago yeah these come back every spring so that's a win for me those i don't know what those are they live they come back every year every spring so who knows now this tree right here it's still kind of bare boned there's no foliage on it yet but it is alive and well this is a japanese maple tree so uh yeah it blooms out every spring very nicely here's my other success story with the privet tree is that what that is you guys see that got some growth here now this one i didn't put in the tub i just put it right in the ground yeah i didn't do much to it you know but it's taken off so it's a keeper i don't know what this is i just planted I, there was a sale at lowe's and i got a few of these and uh this is the only one that really made it so yeah the birds kind of chomped out on it a little bit pecking at it out of curiosity realized it wasn't nothing good to eat and then they moved on and so now it's making a comeback okay so some more english ivy this is like the mother load of english ivy it's in this big pot but i did cut out the bottom so the roots can grow and you know the roots can grow and feed all of this this has grown quite well it has actually just taken over 
and it's not a problem it does more good than bad so I'm okay with it the English ivy growing around there yeah so I'm feeding it through the wire here and it just keeps continually they need to take over now eventually I'm gonna have to replace this wire yeah, there's some old chicken wire it's one of the older pins I don't know how many more years it's got on it but when I replace that wire well then I got to take all this stuff out cut it back but the English ivy is a hardy plant it'll come right back that's for a later day though okay I've mentioned before these cypress trees I had four of them lined up here that's just an old oak weed yeah so these cypress trees, I don't think they get enough sun. They're in the sun now, but they need more, you know. This one right here has died. They moved on to the tree heavens. But um, they're not really thriving here. They should have been a lot bigger by now. You know those trees or cypress bushes that kind of create you a, a barrier, like a privacy fence? Yeah, that was the plan for right here. Yeah, they're just not thriving. This is my uh, fig tree I planted not too long ago. Now this one right here, I think it is in a bad location as well. It's right at the end of those cypress trees. And uh, yeah, they just don't get enough sun here. I mean, this thing is alive. You see the little buds coming out. But yeah. Learn, live and learn, trial and error. Oh, you guys say hi to Gus. Hey Gus, come on Gus, back up so we can see you. Oh. Little Gus. And then you guys, I got some plum trees that I planted. Now they're not too big and they're doing pretty good actually. Regular plum trees, not flowering plum. So this one's a elephant heart plum. Right here, it's just budding out the blooms. This one will bloom pretty soon. Now I got three different varieties of plum trees so they can uh, pollinate each other or whatever. <laughs> Hey, I said I'm no gardener, but I do like planting trees and stuff, especially ones that live. This one right here is a flowering plum. See that? See, when I see that, I think spring. Beautiful. There's another plum tree. This is a fruit bearing plum tree as well as those other two. Now I ripped the tag off. I don't know what this variety is called. Another flowering plum situated in front of the silver pen here. Yeah, all my 8x16s have one flowering plum tree in front of them. So they can eventually provide some kind of shade. Yeah, we're years out from that, but that is the plan. Now you guys remember when I planted my English ivy, you know, those small plants at the corner of my pens. You know, the 8x16s here, let me back up and show you. Like there's one pan and then on the left side, there's English ivy. I planted, uh, God, I planted these a while back. This one is a newer pen, so it's this one's uh, just a fresh plant. But this is the idea of it. I'm gonna have this English ivy. I'm gonna train it to go up this bamboo stick here and then wrap itself around the pen. You know, sort of like, the, it'll have the look of Albert's pen. You know, where it kind of just crawls and creeps along the side and in the corner there. Providing some sense of security, you know? I just think it looks cool too. Yeah. See, here's another one. Here. I did have it wrapped around here and it came unwrapped. But I noticed when it came unwrapped, it stood straight up. Huh, interesting. Hey, there's Mr. Tragapon, guys. Tragapon! Oh shoot. Oh, there's Mrs. Tragapon. Hey girl. What you doing, girl? You see that look, guys? That is the look of, I'll come closer if you have treats, but if you have nothing for me, I'm not coming. Unless Mrs. Mr. Tragapon chases her out. 
Hey, buddy. Love spring, guys. I can't wait to get some big, some chicks from these guys. Well, at least some eggs. I'll be happy with eggs, Mrs. Tragapon. Mrs. Tragapon's looking at Kevin. Kevin. You got Mrs. Tragapon's attention. She heard you all the way from over there. Hey, buddy, turn around. Ah, there you go. He even lets me touch his tail. Look at this, guys. Mind if I touch your tail, Kevin? Can I have that feather right there? Kevin. He's like, excuse me. I'm getting sidetracked, guys. We better move along. So, yeah. More flower and plum. And inside the aviaries, I have planted some cedar trees. That's because they last the longest. Birds don't like them. Take a couple pecks at them and realize it tastes bad. Lady Amherst, how you doing, buddy? So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I now have a couple of, like, flower plants, too. They're in these pots in front of the pens. Kind of sporadic, you know, not very uniform or anything. Just some random plants in front of the pens there. This one right here is a flowering. Let's not me if I can read it. Autumn Sage Red. Okay, whatever that means. Autumn page red. We got one. Yep, so here's another example. One of my old English ivies. Now this one's a thriving plant right here. I think I planted these earlier last year. So, and they have grown quite a bit. And usually like in the second year, third year, then they start really just taking off. If they make it, they usually take off. And I'll have it go up that bamboo. Just like I said before. Oh yeah, check this out. This is a bamboo plant I got from my mother-in-law. Kind of slapped it in between two pins here. She told me, be careful, it is evasive. And I just, I told her, hey, if I had an evasive plant, I'd be lucky. Because I'm not very good at planting plants. Sometimes they don't even take off. They stay small forever. So, yeah, I got to brace myself for this one. <laughs> I don't think it's happening. More of my whatever plant that is, some kind of ornamental grass plant. Same with this one here and this one right here, a little, a little further along. Now, guys, I got a little tip for you if you like planting plants like me and you want something that'll just take off, something very hardy, something that you don't really, something low maintenance, won't have to do much to it. That is a lilac plant. This guy's right here. This plant, we have a few of these plants right here. We had dug up some, even threw them across the yard and they still lived. But yeah, you guys can't really see. There's not much going on with it. There's a little, a few little leaves there. Yeah, very hardy plant. It's not the prettiest plant, but it's not ugly either. It's another favorite of mine. Now this one right here was, an accident happened. I don't know what happened here. Looked like something chomped on it with big jaws and just chomped it right in half. But it is still alive. So I got to get out here and actually cut that off. Yeah, not doing it any good. But this is a dogwood. Now it's a flowering dogwood, I believe. I'll have to check on that. Forgot I had the tag and I lost it. But uh, it is still growing. It was a lot prettier last year. Now it's ugly because it's caught on top. But uh, yeah, a dogwood, shade friendly plant, you know, part shade, part sun, whatever. So yeah, guys, there's my little plant trip. Hope you guys made it this far. And if you did, I'm proud of you and I'm happy for you and I'm grateful. Um, let me share my little ramble about my plants. Yeah, that's great. Anyways, uh, let me tell you guys about the plant that I don't like. The one that's holding me up, it's holding me back and I can't move forward until this tree goes just take a little walk a little walk on the wild side do 
You guys see this tree right here? Okay. This one right here has got to go. I cannot build any more pins until it goes. Um, I don't like it, but look at that area up here. See where it's open, where a branch has already rotted off and died. Uh, yeah, there you go, guys. I was thinking because of that spot right there, I know it got a lot of water and rain in there. And if you have water getting into a tree that just sits, it will rot the tree, it will die. Now this tree is still alive, but it is not healthy because of that spot. Now I actually thought I can still build my pins. Here guys, let me show you. Continue from there, from that pin, onto the other side there. Yeah, this whole empty area needs to be filled with pins. But I can't build until I drop this. It'll be in the way. Now what happens if I built some pins there and this thing eventually rotted and died off and fell on the pins, then we'd be in a whole world of trouble. Now I actually thought maybe that spot's not too bad. Maybe I got a few years, you know, before I can have to deal with it. But then I seen this. Check this out. See in between there? It is just rotted. It is bad. And like I said, it, the tree is still alive, and uh, but eventually it's just gonna rot out until it splits and falls into pieces or whatever. Now, also, I don't know if you guys can see, but down there, it has uh, accumulated water that just won't drain. And that tells me it is rotted and there's nothing I can do about it. This tree has gotta go. Oh, damn. There's all kinds of red ants. Oh my God, they're all over me. You guys see that? Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is covered in fire ants. I gotta go, guys. Let's take a look in there real quick. Oh, uh, yeah, this tree is bad news. Those freaking ants. Yeah, that was terrible. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, you see what's holding me up here? Now, let me turn the camera around so you guys can get the view up from this side. So there's my pins there. All the pins lined up. Then you see the empty gap here where that red trailer is. Now, that tree right there is the one that's gotta go. I can't continue building it until that thing goes. So, you guys stay tuned for that progress that is a big tree you know it's kind of bare right now but see the extent of it, how tall that is but the tricky part is there's a branch here let me get a little closer again hopefully those ants don't get me now there is a branch that comes right there and goes out that way so we gotta fell this just right because now if it was just the long tall part right there, no problem. But now we gotta be fancy when we cut it down because it's gotta fall with that branch missing this pins right here. I don't wanna take out my pins dropping it. Yep, that's a monster. Now I can't get out of here without showing you guys a couple of my beautiful babies, okay? This is the pheasantry after all. So here they are. Well. There's Kevin right there. We see a lot of Kevin, don't we? He's just always around. Every time I'm out here, he's out here. And he's always right there near me. I love him, he's my buddy. That's great. Anyways, here's my birds, guys. A couple of them. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. That right there, guys, is the spring screech from Popeye, the yellow golden pheasant. Oh. This one a plant video. Here's another plant right here that is like a traveling vine plant that I planted in front of Popeye's pan a couple years ago. Now this one right here fills out really nice. I did have three right here. They died, two died, this one made it. I wish they would all live so it's all uniform. Whatever. Popeye, good to see you buddy. Electric. See, now they stopped dancing. Electric? 
Did you actually take a break? Did you take a break from dancing? Huh? Oh, oh, you came to say hi. Thanks, buddy. Hey, nice to see. Look at Kevin. Kevin's dancing. That was just for me, wasn't it, Kevin? Good grief. I must look good today, huh, Kevin? There's that tail again. You touch your tail? He lets me touch his tail. That's freaking awesome. He puts it down. Nope. Denied. All right. Boss. Tell everybody happy spring, buddy. All right. Something like that. Anyways, folks. There's Kevin. We are out of here. Thanks for joining us once again. This has been from Spent Tracks Pheasantry. Thank you for joining me on this garden trip. And uh, it's springtime. A lot more plants to buy. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Surprise, surprise, everyone. Snowflake bobwhite quails going in the bader.